Cardinal Lightning Talks. Uh, my Lightning Talks about going back to the core of Agile, and I'm going to be drawing during this uh, this part. Um, the thing is that in my work as an Agile coach these days, when I go to many companies all around the world, this is a global phenomenon. I get questions in the line of who should be our product owner. Who is the person that should be doing that role in our community? Or what is a Scrum Master and why do we need one? You know? And who's the best person for the Scrum Master? Should Scrum Master be the leader of the team? Should the Scrum Master be an architect? I also get a lot of questions about how to write better user stories. Uh, how do we write better user stories? How do we capture requirements? What happens when the product owner shows on in the product planning meeting and the user stories are not written? Is this his fault? Shall the Scrum Master write the stories? I also get a lot of questions about how to, and this is a big one these days, scale Agile in the company. This is hot right now. We have all these nifty, beautiful, uh, maps and frameworks and infographies and drawings on how Agile should work in the big company. And then I also have always this question about, oh, I, but I have also this specialist that cannot be shared by all the teams. What, have, uh, what can we do with this person? Shall we create a team of one? That's brilliant. <laughs> I also get a lot of questions on daily meetings. Oh, our dailies are so boring. We have one person saying, oh, yesterday I did this, and today I'm working on that. And we have the rest of the team going like, because they don't care, because they are not actually sharing any kind of work. They are working on different projects, different stuff. I also get a lot of questions on contracts. How do we sign Agile contracts? How can we make our providers, our suppliers Agile? I get a lot of questions on estimates. That's another big one. Oh, how can we, you know, we have these estimates and then we always run over that. We are so bad at estimating. I get that a lot. I think that most of the companies think that somewhere on earth, there's a company that is super good at estimates. We are bad. No, but there's someone else that is so good at estimates. Haven't found that company. Probably there's a bias there. Anyway, I also get a question about which is the best software to use. Shall we use Jira? Shall we use a version one? It's better to go with Trello. It's better to have a physical board. It's better to have a, an electronic board. And also, of course, I have questions about how to get managers on board and how to deal with grumpy employees and with people that are against agility. And you know, all these questions are relevant. And at some given point, it's very, very important that, uh, that we get to this point that we actually care about these things. But most of the time, the problem is that in order to answer these questions, we have to really understand what are we doing. And then when I ask people, what's your goal? What are you trying to do here? They are like, oh, oh we are trying to do, I don't know, Scrum, for instance. Uh, this is our goal. Our goal is to be Scrum compliant. You know, this has never been about compliance. I think this has something to do with the certificate culture. Okay? We, have to, we want everything in the checklist. And you know what? You can end up doing something that is called cosmetic Scrum or evil scrum. Evil scrum is when you have an evil company, okay? You have Sauron and the Orcs of Mordor. But now they're doing scrum, so now they're agile. Okay, and, and, then, you, and then you have some orcs saying, okay, so yesterday we recruited Saruman, so that's done, done. And currently we are in the battle of deep, uh, Hell's Deep, and we still have to find the one ring, okay? That's pending. Uh, yeah, we are agile. <laughs> You're still an evil company, but hey, we're doing standards, and we have burn on charts, some post-it notes, and you can end up doing something really, really stupid, like putting some layer of agile paraphernalia, I don't know if you, if you, if you use that word in English, it's, it's like agile props, in, on top of an evil culture, on a wonderful process. So that's the reason that I think we have to think again, what are we trying to do here? Okay, it's very simple. What we're trying to do here, the whole story has always been, we need to have happier customers. This is what all it's all about, okay? Uh, I'm going to promote my own session on value stream mapping on Thursday. We're going to be talking about value and customers and all that. End of story. So in order to have happier customers, we have to figure out what can we do? What's the problem that we're solving? What's the problem that our customers are having? And there are many kind of customers, many kind of problems, many kind of industries, 
But in my travels around the world, helping a lot of industries in the technology world and in the knowledge workers world and in the creative economy, I found that there are some common problems like, hey, we want to have value faster. We don't want to wait. Time is very, very important in this space. We also want to have like more motivated employees. Because talent retention and you know reducing the turnover and, and keeping your most talented employees, that's a problem for everyone in the company right now. And we have more problems and we have more needs for our customers. We need better quality, we need more efficient products. There's a terrible statistics out there that says that 60% of the features that the software industries is the software industry creates are never used by anyone. Even if you don't believe that, I can say from my own experience, 60% of the things we do at big companies or even medium companies, yeah, okay, it's nice if we do them, it's nice projects, somebody will get some value out of them. But if we do it, if we didn't do them, probably nothing would happen. That's terrible. That's like saying 60% of the cars made never get driven, never get sold. That will basically destroy the economy worldwide. But in software, we are like pretty okay. We have 60% of the features never used. That's a problem. Okay, so in order to solve that problem, there's many things we can do. I don't know this, but if you have something that solves that problem, do it. But my way of solving that problem is going back to four things that are listed in the manifesto and are the four things that Agile is about. Agile is about early and continuous delivery of value. Instead of working two, working two years in a project and delivering something in two years, only to find out, oh yeah, this is what I needed two years ago, this is what, not what I need now, or even worse, this is not what I asked yet. Okay? We've only been there. Instead of that, we have incremental delivery. So it doesn't matter if you're doing standards and, and post-it notes and all that. If you don't have incremental, evolutive design, incremental iterative uh, delivery. We also need to adapt our products. Sometimes we start delivering a product and we are delivering what the customer asks for, but then the customer realizes it's not what he needs. So we have to have this feedback from the customer and we get the customer on board in our, in our development. You have the most nifty software in the market but you don't have the customer on your side, you're probably too far from the idea of agility. Then we need collaboration, real teams. Not just five people in a room working on separate projects, six people in a room working on different user stories. We need more mock programming, we need more seven people working on the same problem at the same time. And of course, we need continuous improvement. And I swear that if you go through the manifesto, everything that's there probably will fall into some of these four categories. In fact, if you want to know more, and I'm out of my time, Alistair Coburn, signer of the manifesto, co-author, has been talking about something he calls the heart of Agile, which is basically the same for uh, categories. He has a different name for, for Adapt. He talks about reflect, okay? But it's uh, basically the same idea. I was getting into this conclusion in 2013, hey, it's all about four things, and then in 2014, 2015, Alistair Coburn came with this idea. Of course, he's far more famous than me. So now it's the Heart of Agile by Dr. Alistair Coburn. I'm so happy to be following this idea. And if you want to know more about how to use this in order to have a more common sense approach to agility beyond certificates and compliance, please learn more about the Heart of Agile. And of course, I'm available for your questions. Thank you so much. <laughs>